What you do when you're spraying this down, you try to wet it as fast as you can, get everything sprayed down, and then just close it as fast as you can. And I spray the entire time I'm closing the lid because I want to keep as much moisture in there as possible. Hey guys, Frank Cox here, smokerbuilder.com. Hey, I'm going to show you today how to clean this up with your own smoker. We've been cooking on this thing, and I haven't had a chance to clean it in the last few days. So I just figured, you know, there's a little bit of surface grease on it, and uh, it's really cooking rash dirty, and it's still got ash and stuff in it. And I just figured I'd show you what it takes to clean one of the junk up, so stay tuned. First thing I always do, of course, I got an apron on here because I got my good pants on today and I didn't think this through too clearly. But uh, anyway, I get these gloves here because uh, inside of here it's pretty greasy. It's going to be like uh, just black cooking grease and no like season, and it's that way from top to bottom. So I always recommend a good pair of some kind of nitrile gloves or something, you know, to make it easy for you to clean yourself up. That's the only piece do it. You gotta clean this, then you gotta clean yourself, right? I always try to have some kind of scraper. You can see this one here is well used. Now, this is the one we use for cleaning our pits. This is actually a, a floor scraper that's got a sharp blade on one end of it, so it's ultra flat on one edge. And then I personally like this style of brush. You can see it's, it, it gets used a lot too. But it's like a wire brush, but it's coiled wire brush. Now, you gotta be careful because you don't wanna use like a Brillo pad or something to get the little wires and stuff from the brush could get stuck on the cooking grate. Anyway, I'm gonna get you up in here and show you what's inside. This is our slotted laser cut cooking grate. And uh, you'll see here, it's got some food deposits on it and some grease and stuff like that. Pretty much typical to any smoker. Um, anyway, I pull that thing out first and I set it off to the side. So down in here farther is our super tuner. Baffle plate. And you can see as we're cooking, we're getting food deposits that come down on here. A lot of it, a lot of it just kind of vaporizes and uh, circulates with airflow. The rest of it kind of like the heavy dripping just turns into a crusty stuff. So what I do is I scrape that off with the scraper and then use a wire brush to clean that up. And then we're going to take care of the rest of that whenever we go through the steep, the seasoning process and get it cooked. One thing to note, as we're doing this, uh, we don't have any like uh, soap or anything involved. All we're doing is just scraping it off, um, trying to get down. We don't want to get down to bare metal. We just want to get down to that that uh, layer of oil, that oily seasoning coating. Just the same way you would do like an iron skillet. So then the next thing I've got in here is this basket, the charcoal basket here. And you can see that's after a uh, full day of cooking right there. That's like about 15 pounds of charcoal it holds. That's what's left out of that. And that's all the ash that it all comes up with the basket. Even though you don't have this lip right here, it just pulls right out if you can see that. So I just dumped this out. We're gonna start over with brand new charcoal when we season it. So I'm gonna set it off to the side. And last but not least, we've got our heat shield and our block off plate. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this thermometer and uh, then I'm gonna pull that out of there. It just spins right off. So anyway, I'm gonna take this off and put the nut on it and set it off to the side. Okay, now we can pull out this Draftmaster uh, heat shield and block off plate. I'm gonna grab that now. And it's easier to do like this, you just grab it. And as you come up, the heat shield is small enough that if you use the bolts we send with it, it should fit in between these. Sometimes you gotta pull one of these long grate bolts out. If you have to do that, take, just get you a screwdriver and a wrench and pop those out. And then it just pops right out of there. Now, if you're looking at this, you can see there's no grease in here, it's just ash and uh, charcoal. So that baffle plate catches all the grease and keeps it from getting down in where your ash and stuff is. Um, that makes these things a little easier to clean. If, you're, if you can see down in there, we pretty much just got a little bit of grease mixed in with a little bit of ash. We're just gonna take a scraper and we're gonna scrape that out of there and you can use a paper towel to wipe it out. You can see that basically there's a little bit of bare metal showing, but for the most part, I got all of the, uh, the food buildup and the grease and the worst part of it out of there. And that's really all you need to do. Now I'm gonna take this blade on edge and find places that have like some food buildup. I'm just gonna scrape on the edge a little bit. There we go. Now we're gonna use that wire brush and scrape. But anyway, that's all I do on this right here. Just get it down to where, you don't wanna get rid of your coating that's in here, but if you decide to go ahead and power wash this thing, uh, you'll have to re-season it. So we're gonna take care of the 
the rest of this here, whenever we do the fire up process and do the steam treatment. This is our super tuner plate. And if you look at it, the back of it's got a lot of little just grippy stuff on it. And the top has got just this, this scrapey up food deposit stuff. Um, I'm outside, so I don't mind getting this on the ground, but if you're doing this in your garage or something, put some cardboard down. But just uh, doesn't take much, just kind of just scrape over it a little. Now on these on these little baffle, these tunable uh, tabs here, if you scrape this and push it down, just use your finger. I use my, my pinky finger flat. You should have about a quarter of an inch gap here on both of these and about a half inch gap on these, three eighths to a half. Just use your finger to judge that all the way around to make them even. You always see me, I stick my finger in those things. This, this is an easy way to check for me because it's not like precision, you know. Anyway, so I'm gonna finish scraping this off. I'm gonna flip it over and just do the same thing on the back. You're just trying to get rid of this big dripping grease stuff here. You notice there's no rust on this and this, this stuff just almost wipes off with your finger. You know, if you stay on top of it and keep it clean, this, uh, you know, this will clean off real quick. There's the bottom side where it was dripping, you know. So, like I say, just it just comes right off like that. See? Um, if you scrape the bulk of the food deposits off, then you can just use the wire brush like this right here and just kind of just get down in there and get some of the, the baked on stuff off of there. You don't have to get it 100% because what we're going to do there's a process I call steaming it. We're gonna put this thing in there and mix it with water once it's up about 300 degrees. And whenever we get this, the moisture boiled off and dried out of the drum, then uh, we're gonna be able to spray it down with a little bit of oil and get that seasoning built back up again. So just take your time and just kind of scrape all this stuff off there, get the best you can, and then the steam will sanitize it. Okay, now it's real important that if you use a wire brush on your cooking grate, of any kind that you would go over the entire cooking grate and watch for wire bristles. This one here is a lot easier to clean because it's just got ash build up, mostly with a little bit of grease. So if you just scrape around on the, the flat surface here, you can kind of see it's just, just whatever made it through the baffle plane is all that you're seeing here. And then uh, when I'm done with that, I'm going to go ahead and dump it out over there. So here we got our charcoal basket. You can see there's ash and stuff in there. Um, I've only got, a, only got one of these galvanized cans laying around. Of course, we use it for our wood furnace too, but you can just dump this in here. Makes it makes a good easy way to get rid of that stuff. And then that's really all we got to do on our charcoal basket. You can see it gets pretty hot. You know, you can scrape off a little bit of this greasy stuff if you want, but I'm good with that. We're gonna start with our heat shield block off plate combo. We're just gonna drop that down in the bottom. And then you can kind of see, just center it in there. And we're not quite ready to light a fire, so I'm just going to go ahead and put this back in here. The draft off the basket. In the hole in the middle. And we can put our super tender back in. Just kind of center that in there. There's a little bit of room around it so that you can actually get it in and out of the barrel. Then we got to put our nuts and bolts and our thermometer back in. Like I said, just unscrew that. And I dropped my washer earlier, but it just goes on there. And I usually just hand tighten it. And we're gonna put our nut and bolt back in for the cooking grate mount, you know. We'll just set this in there for now, the cooking grate. In order to get this thing clean, we've got this layer of grease. Well, these glass cleaner wipes right here work pretty good just for kind of getting the, the grease kind of released off of there. Scrub around a little bit, go one direction with them, you know. If you wanna take your blades off, you can take them off and, and uh, you know, clean these in your hand instead of fighting them like I'm doing right now. But you're just trying to get the bulk of the grease off of the painted surfaces. Um, it's going to feel a little bit sticky first couple of rounds, but 
as you go like that, you're, you're getting the surface dust and the worst of it off of there. And you're trying not to scratch it so you're not like digging. You just kind of wipe in one direction like that. You, see, you can probably see the difference, I hope, in the camera with how that did. And here's like a microfiber kind of a towel. Just do the same thing, but don't push too hard because if you start digging with this, you can definitely scratch. Just put like some clear coat kind of scratches in it, you know, that you'll have to buff out or whatever. But what we're doing is we're going one direction with it. And we're looking for, as we're drying off the glass wipe stuff, we're looking for, you know, spots of grease and stuff like that that need to be wiped off. If you don't run like I do, you got and you got time to do this, you should do it every cook. It just makes it a lot easier. And it is a smoker. You don't have to get crazy with it, but we don't want it to look ugly, even though it's called an ugly gum, right? And you can just kind of use this here. If you got a little buffing compound or something, you can stick on there. That'll help, but uh, you can at least get in there and just kind of shine it up a little bit. Nice, shiny, ugly drum lid again. So we're just gonna repeat that process all over this whole cooker. So anyway, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna season this thing. Uh, we're gonna heat it up and we're gonna steam clean it and we're gonna uh, season it. So to do that, you know how I do it, I use a charcoal chimney, um, get a little bit of lump in there and get it started. And then uh, we're gonna put a little bit of charcoal in this basket. So now uh, we got our fire lit, we got the uh, baffle plate assembly in there, we've got the cooking rack in there. Now we're just gonna let magic happen. What I do is leave the smokestack all the way open. I open both of these about one finger or so, both of your air inlets, and uh, we're just gonna let this baby sit here and purr for a little bit, come up to 300 degrees. You notice it's like thin blue smoke coming out right now. There's no uh, big heavy white smoke or anything. When I spray this in there, we're gonna start getting some steam. Here we go. Just spray everything down. And then shut the lid as fast as you can. That way that steam will go around in there and it'll just like, it'll help release a lot of that baked on uh, just food grease stuff that we didn't get cleaned out. And, uh, Anyway, uh, it'll get us back to that real good seasoned coat. This thing's all dried out now. I'm getting ready to wipe on a coating of oil. You know, this good old fashioned just cooking spray is fine, canola oil. You can use shortening, you can use vegetable oil, um, any kind of oil like that or cooking oil, food safe oil. So anyway, what I do is I have a paper towel handy because I'm gonna spray it with this. And then when I'm done, I'm gonna wipe out the thick spots with this. So here we go. And another tip here is close your air inlets before you open up this drum so you can prevent the temperature from spiking. And we're running about 325 right now in here. And then you just literally just spray this on. Try not to get it on the paint job you just cleaned. Just like that. And then I just take this paper towel and just kind of wipe it around a little bit. There we go. Now we're gonna close the lid and let that bake in.